guys, Ash here coming at you today in Rain Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm happy to have you here. How y'all doing? Send some positivity your way, especially if you need it out there today. I'm in a, in a great mood. I actually tweeted this out the other day, but I taught my son, my five-year-old, how to play chess, and I wasn't quite sure if a five-year-old would be receptive to learning anything about chess. I thought, like, maybe we should start with checkers, Charlie. But, dude, I am so proud, little fella. I'm, like, proud papa moment because, you know, not only does he, obviously, he, you know, he's not over there with Magnus Carlsen or anything like that, but he understands what each piece does. And just it, one thing about being a parent to me is, it's incredible how much, how intelligent kids are. And I know that's like kind of a weird thing to say, but for me, not just my son, but like, I guess before I was a dad, I kind of thought that every kid was just a kid. I don't watch the news. And now I'm realizing that no, like, you know, they're, they're intelligent human beings and it's unbelievable what they're capable of. So I'm just having a blast with him playing chess like every night. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm just in a good mood, guys. Sending positive, again, vibes your way today. You know what, guys? I uh, saw this offer in my shop today. It's for a speed set. Now, I've never bought a speed set. Don't lie to them. Hmm? I'm not lying. It's like one of the only things I haven't bought in this freaking game, right? I've never bought artifacts or accessories in the shop. I'm just not a fan of doing that when you can just farm them. Why spend that much money? I'd rather, if anything, buy energy. And, you know, it just goes a lot further, right? Anyway, with that all said, uh, I, it got me thinking, seeing this speed set, because I know a lot of whales used to just binge buy all five speed sets every time it showed up in the shop, even legendary, which were more expensive than this. Uh, and, and it got me thinking back in the day that speed ruled everything inside the arena and it's just not that way anymore. Even for your Great Hall farming, a lot of teams are switching over to kind of a hybrid model where they're, you know, sure, they're not going to win the speed race against every battle, and it might not be quite as quick in terms of using all your tokens right away, but your win percentage will definitely go up because sometimes with speed, you just don't know if you're going to win the battle or not, right? It's a crapshoot, and sometimes you lose, you throw away that arena token, and thus you throw away the time too, right? So that speed or that time that you make up necessarily might not be worth it in the long run, you know? So anyway, I love Go Second Teams. We're seeing in Platinum Arena almost everything, everything is Go Second Teams, right? So on my free-to-play account, I've also shifted to a Go Second strategy. And, you know, I want to talk about specifically one champion that changed my account. Odds are that most of you do not have her. What you say? When you say it like that, yeah, it sounds really sad. I also just want to talk about my team the evolution of my Go Second team on this account and my free-to-play account in today's video. Maybe kind of spur on some ideas, talk about substitutions with you guys throughout this video and what you should be thinking about on a Go Second team in general. So without further ado, the champion that absolutely like I got so lucky pulling this champion. Let me just be real, man. She wasn't on a 10 time or anything. And it's, uh, it's, well, let me, let me just pull her up. Recently used first. Here we go. Where are you? Where, okay, there she is. Ah, ah, Marichika the Unbreakable. You really think you're that much better than me? Oh, I think we both know the answer to that. She's so freaking good. I want to show you why, okay? It's it's way more than meets the eye on this champion. There's a reason we're seeing more and more and more of her in Platinum Tier Arena because I think people are catching on to just how incredible she is. And I hope to show you that with the team that I have prepared in today's video. And again, I will give substitutions and stuff like that. It's not all about just the champions, more about the team and the synergy. But of course, I do want to highlight her as well. So somebody randomly is going to join in with their A1 ability uh, every time she uses her, her A1. So so, you know, right away, I'm thinking, dude, let's pair her with one of the best go second nukers in the game and one of the hardest hitting A1s inside the entire game, bar none, it's Candrophon. So I get a chance, you know, one in three chance that Candyman is going to join the attack on that A1 when she goes in, right? Which is basically going to kill somebody, you know, at least half the time. On the A2, we get one of the best heals in the game. It is 40% of this champion's max HP. I have her at around 105k HP, so we're getting like a 40k plus heal and a protected strengthen and a shield. That's incredible, okay? What a great ability. And then she has a full cleanse, increased resistance for five for each debuff removed, and grants an extra turn if five or more debuffs were removed from this A3 ability. But really guys, what I underestimated about this kid is this passive it is insane revives all dead allies 50 percent hp 75 percent turn meter whenever this champion is killed on a three turn cooldown okay dude even if she dies at the same time let's just say trunda wipes everybody dude instant revival everybody else with 75 percent turn meter it's insane so even if they die at the same time 
it's going to revive everybody when you have her on your squad. And that to me is just, well, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's freaking amazing, right? Uh, not only that, but, you know, any bomb champions place a bomb on you guys the gleeful or something no worries we get an immediate block damage on that on that ally as well right uh mithrala places a poison boom immediate block damage on on those champions as well so that comes in to effect as well the active effect and both of these passives just provide so much value i hope to show you in today's i'm going to guarantee to show you how this works this giving all passive but it's incredible she has 24 percent speed in all battles and then i put word of the fallen on her uh this going to give her two rounds of boned armor bone armor to start each round or and uh 20 damage mitigation right uh plus the 5,000 hp which is just as valuable for masteries on this champion i went down and i picked up uh, a resistance unshakable lasting gifts and all the healing masteries because she's a healing beast and bolster is really one of my favorite sets in the game for any go second champion on any go second team guys 30 percent protected ally shield for three turns and then wear heals every 10 percent every turn on top of that Dude, a 10% max HP heal every turn. She's rocking like an 11K heal every single time she even takes a turn. That's incredible. Uh, beyond that, though, guys, Stone Skin One Piece. Don't sleep on getting one artifact for 8% HP. That's really solid. So one Stone Skin piece, hey, it gets the job done. So uh, I have her in a fully ascended, really end game build, obviously here. I have her built with some resistance as well. So resist and HP up 20% on this chest. One of my better chest pieces that I have uh, for Relentless Gear. Then I have HP on the boots with some defense on, this, on the substat. I haven't fully ascended that yet, but you know what? You know what, guys? Can we do it? We can do it. Let's do it. Oh, man. That is going to take me like five hours to recoup that many uh, oils, huh, guys? It's easy to spend. It's easy to ascend. And it's very difficult, at least in my uh, experience, on recouping that. And then we have resist with HP again on the gauntlets. So HP... More HP, she's slow, slow build here, even though she has a very high 110 base speed. I tried her out also in uh, in, in Stone Skin, right? And you can make, an I think, an equal argument that Stone Skin makes sense on her versus Bolster. But with Bolster, I know I'm going to be keeping my team alive with that really big shield. Again, 33,000 or so, 34,000 HP shield to start out every turn on top of whatever else I have on the squad to protect them and mitigate damage. Uh, and again, she's going to be mitigating damage on her with the Ward of the Fallen. So basically, no one's going to be one-shotting my team, which is the most important thing here. And again, I was able to build her with over 100k HP, over 3k on the defense, but almost 600 on the resist as well, which is nice. Not going to be high enough to resist everything, but it's super, super helpful there because we really don't want her to get CC'd. We want to come in with that cleanse on this A3 and, you know, remove the debuffs from everybody else. Ideally, again, granting another turn after that. So I love, love, love this champion. Also on my best go second team right now is duchess in a full six piece stone skin set also built with a lot of resist or a decent amount and 532 uh faster 273 in a little bit of defense and hp not the most op build i would say in the game but considering it is a six piece stone skin i am happy with the build overall you can see the mastery is also going with unshakable and then we have netcrat the great he's actually going in and picking up bulwark decreases the damage allies received by an additional five percent this champion will see that damage instead it's really nice to have on one champion on your go second team again soaking up more damage right which is really great also we don't have it but selfless defender decrease the damage an hour receives from the first hit in each round by 20 percent this champion will receive that damage instead is nice to have on your tankiest champion inside the arena so necrot the great is also on the squad necrot is also in a six piece stone skin set and then we have the candy man i am not thrilled with candrafon's build here guys i have lethal i ought to change that to savage because Frankly, my lethal gear, despite farming Dark Fae as much as I possibly can, isn't that great. So uh, I should just rework him. However, uh, total stats, 5,500 on the attack. A little bit low considering I have attack percentage boots on him, okay? That's why he's so slow at 158, but it's a go second team. 103, 226, and a little bit of resist on him as well. The most important thing on Candorphon to, to recognize here, guys, if you're not familiar with this champion, is uh, his passive, okay? From the Shadows. Damn 
damage increased by 40% when attacking under Veil or Perfect Veil. Receives 40% da less damage while attacking under a Veil or Perfect Veil. Boosts his champion's term year by 15% each time he receives damage under a Veil or Perfect Veil. Uh, active effect plays a Perfect Veil on this champion for one turn each time an enemy's term meter is filled. This buff cannot be removed. So he has that Perfect Veil on his passive, and then, you know, ergo 40% damage mitigation, 40% more damage too, right? And then he has Duchess on the team too to give the Perfect Veil. So a lot of Veil synergy on this squad. And of course, as any Nuker, I do have Helm Smasher as my Tier 6 Mastery on the offensive tree. And, uh, you know, not to mention Ruthless Ambush, Opportunist, uh, all the Masteries I really want on these champions. However, Opportunist on this particular team is not going to be uh, activated, but it's still a good one to have for your Nukers. Also, since I don't have any buff removers on this team, and I'm going to be going into Shields a lot with Canderfawn, Shield Breaker is a must. Increased damage inflicted on targets under Shield Buffs by 25%. That's actually really, really significant. Do not sleep on Shield Breaker on your go second nuker, okay? Because you're gonna be going into shields again quite a bit. It's not like we have a Madame Ceres to remove all buffs or Prince Kaima or something like this on this team. So those are the builds. That is my team. Now let's go ahead and show it in action here, guys. And I left this team. I hope it happens again, right? I actually was going to win this battle against this squad, but then I stopped the battle when there was only one champion left, and I'm like, I have to show my audience this. I have to show them this fight. I hope it happens again. I'm not sure if it was RNG based, but this is perfectly, uh, you know, sh sh showing you guys, demonstrating is the word I was looking for, the power of this champion in the arena. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm just going to keep it on full auto. And keep in mind, guys, too, if you're not so interested in this endgame content, I will have my free to play uh, Go Second Team uh, available for you guys to check out at the end of this video. So if I can remember to timestamp that, I will, or you can just go ahead and scroll. Look at all these buffs on my team. Starting out pretty strong. Candyman goes in, of course, not killing anybody. They all have stone skin and ally protect from Necret and a lot. So the first two rounds, and this is going to happen, especially as you get uh, further and further in the arena, you're just going to be, everybody's going to be buffed up to, you know, <laughs> to the sky. And you're just going to have to chill a little bit till those two cooldowns come down so we can get our chance at going in for the attack and actually killing somebody, right? So I hope that we die like we did the last time. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but we'll see. So what ended up happening last time? Hopefully it happens again. There's there's the... Hey, as you see, Candyman joined in the random attack and we took out their nuker. We took out Baron. That was off of the A1 from Marichka. Marichka. Dude, one of these days, one of these days, I'll freaking know how to say her name. I promise you guys. Then we have the ally attack on Necro the Great as well, which is really, really handy, as you guys saw. So hopefully they die here because everybody wiped, basically is what happened the first time I went against this team. Everybody wiped, but then she revived everybody and we killed them. <laughs> and that was amazing. And it's happened to me, guys, way more often than I care to admit since I've been running her in the arena. It's really insane, right? Like, if if anybody right now, if they had a Baron alive right now, let's say, right? And he came in and he just nuked everybody to death. Everybody died. We'd be right back up 50% HP and a 75% turn meter. That's incredible. It kind of reminds me, and, and it didn't happen here, but I'm sure it will happen on one of these battles I'm going to show you guys. I'll do like four or five battles. We'll make this a little bit of a longer video. Just have some fun inside the arena. But man, oh man, oh man. I think this is my new best arena team. You guys be the judge. What alterations would you make to this team? All right, guys, I refreshed a couple times, come back at you guys. I wanted to find a good mix of really difficult kind of go second teams or hybrid teams, and then a lot of heavy nukage teams. So we can just kind of go down the row and I'll chill with you guys for a little bit here. Uh, and I really want to talk, before we jump into the free to play, I want to talk more so about how, yes, listen, uh, this team OP, end game, pay to win, whatever you want to call it. However, it's really about the roles. I guarantee, no matter where you are in the game watching right now, you might have just started playing a couple months ago, you might be a free-to-play player, you might be a big spender in the game, you might be uh, have good artifacts, have crappy artifacts, have only a few champions. No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing inside the game, I guarantee that you can make a respectable go second team. So let's talk a little bit about the, the crucial roles and the artifact sets along with the masteries that's gonna help us build a team like this, even if only for tag team arena, it's really, really advantageous 
advantageous to be thinking about a go second team if you don't have one yet. So let's talk about the, the nuker first. Easy to start with a nuker, right? So I have obviously Kanderfon. He's an attack based nuker, but he's on a go second team. They don't have to be def defense. They don't have to be HP based champions. You can get by with an attack based champion, such as Skull Crown, such as Leo. Champions have a built in way that they can't be one shot, right? So again, uh, Leo and Skull Crown have the unkillable when they're going to have a fatal hit. Uh, in addition to that, there's also attack based champions like Rodos, who cannot be one shot, who's really easy to keep alive because you have to build them with a little bit of HP as well for some extra damage. So there's a lot of options out there, even away from defense based or HP based. But we're talking about defense and HP based champions. Obviously, with defense based champions, we want to have an increased uh, defense champion on the team to set them up. They're going to get exponentially more damage from that 60% increased defense. Obviously, increased attack isn't going to be helping them. So what you want to do is go with a uh, Saltus Dragon Bane, a Solus. Uh, there's a lot of good defensive based nukers out there. Those are just a couple of the strongest in the game. Even HP based, actually another one, Marques, a, a rare champion, right? That you can go ahead and pick up in the early game. And she's a really, really solid defensive based nuker on a go second team. And you can see going against these go first teams with this strategy is easy, easy, easy. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, who else is there? Magnar, of course. HP based nuker. He's fantastic. Easy to keep alive. He's a tank and he hits freaking hard with his percussive pound A2 ability. So that's the nukers, right? You, you get a lot of options there. Uh, either attack, defense, or HP based nukers. Now, on top of that, we have our highest HP champion in a bolster set here, right? And that is, again, Marichka. Mar Mariaka. Mar Mar Marichka. Marichka. I'm dying in here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She's our highest HP based champion. We're putting her in the, in the bolster set with the protected shield. If you don't have bolster, no worries, right? Just go with a shield set. It can still be removed, but it's better than nothing on your highest HP champion. Okay. Having an ally protect champion is also very, very helpful on your team. That's going to be good damage mitigation. Okay. Okay, uh, go with like a Virgis or something like that. And you can put Virgis in a shield set or a bolster set. Try to get the most utility you can out of every champion on your team. So you have a, a few different things to cut at your disposal, right? You have Masteries. We talked about it. Selfless Defender and Bulwark. That's going to mitigate a lot of damage. There's also Guardian sets out there, which is going to soak up 10% of all the damage your allies receive. I just can't break now. Now, no one was dead there when she died. So obviously, you know, not going to revive anybody. But I was kind of hoping she would die a little bit later in the match. But you can see here, I'm just going full auto and really... No issues here against any of these squads so far, right? This is why I say this has got to be my best team right now. It's just so good, dude. So tanky, right? Stone Skin is another massive tool at your disposal, right? Uh, so Stone Skin with a Reviver, especially keeping your Reviver, a Mighty Uko, for example, is a great option. Cardinal is a fantastic option. Put her in Stone Skin. If everybody dies, who cares? She's going to stay alive and revive everybody else. It's another reason on top of Mithrala why it's so, so important guys to farm your hydra right to get that stone skin gear protection not so much stone skin yes uh blessings right lightning cage is good stone armor is good whatever it's called uh temporal uh reducing speed is really good that's what i have on necrit right there intimidating presence to strengthen your aura is fantastic you can build a high resist team if you want to or you can just come up with ways to protect your team the biggest thing is you want to prevent being cc'd that can be a mithrala lifebane a champion that has a very high resist and a cleanse or any cleanser that you build with very high resist that way she can come in and cleanse the rest of your team or you can run somebody like that in immunity gear if you don't have stone skin gear so you have a lot of options but having a cleanser in either immunity or stone skin is going to be really great especially if you can't get the resist in the stats or stone skin gear on the rest of the champions on your team and again so far so good we're just plowing through all these speed teams really again these first two teams they're not really you know platinum viable teams but these next two teams are absolutely platinum teams, right? The Cupidus Venus, and we're going to keep going down the line. Now, another champion who's on this squad right now, this is a beautiful fight to go against, by the way, because they have a bomb champion. It will illustrate the power of our passive, putting that block damage on us. But Vogoth is on this team, right? Vogoth is one of the best, and he's an epic champion too. He's one of the best go second champions in the game because he has that heal that's going to be healing everybody else on the squad when he takes any damage. So that's going to be fantastic right it's a great way to keep your team alive see you saw it right there a big hard heavy hit from Kanderfon 
but it doesn't really matter there, right? He's uh, he's still good. I mean, the other team is still good, at least up until this point. And again, we're not going to be taking any debuffs here. We are super well protected with a block debuff vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, what's her face? Uh, uh, Duchess. <laughs> Sorry. You nobody. What are their names again? Gonna go down a little bit. Gonna get a little bit more difficult. I really wish, it's so funny, it's crazy. When I hit record, of course, she's not dying, right? Uh, but a few times, just in the last hour, just trying to climb up in trophies a little bit, a few times, man, she... My team just got wiped and she just instantly revived everybody and it was amazing. I, I hope it happens uh, for you guys because I think from the protected shield, from the ally attack on the A1, the kind of crafty little one ally joining in, and then look at Vogoth, man. The last man standing, dude, on this really solid team. Well, pretty solid team. Vogoth is really, really good option for a go second team, right? It's one of the best arena healers in the game. Now, I'm a little bit scared of two of these champions, right? I'm a little bit scared of Lydia, and I'm a little bit scared of uh, Mortu Macabre. We'll see what happens. This is definitely the most difficult team for this particular team that I am running that I've shown you guys so far. Uh, reason being is because I have, you know, two strong revivals on the death revival and the regular revival here. And obviously they can be blocked. Not only that, but they have a block revival champion on the team as well. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on auto here. I don't think I need to do much. Just got to be very careful about peril and we'll see what happens, right? Can't lose my duchess. Can't lose my Duchess. And I feel like Peril is just like, I say this every time we see Morden Macabre on the channel, but I feel like he gets Peril like 50% of the time, not 20% of the 25% of the time uh, when you're going against him. And you ever use Peril on offense? I mean, you ever use Morden Macabre on offense, guys? Any of you have him? I feel like when you use him on offense, bro, you're never getting it. You're never getting the Peril. <laughs> it's just like, sometimes I'll sit there for 10 minutes. I'll have 20 attacks in a row and not one Peril, but you go against him, it's gotta be, he didn't get it the first time, it's gotta be almost a guarantee, right? Who's gonna die right now? Let's see. Let's go. Peril, go ahead. Go ahead, Mortu. Show us what you got. Oh, he didn't get it. Normally, if given a choice between doing something and nothing, I'd choose to do nothing. Wow, it's a miracle, guys. All right, let's see what we can do here, though. Because obviously, they get a revive right away. We're taking some damage here. Brogni's very good as well, if you're lucky enough to have Brogni. It's a fantastic go second champion. And then uh, his shield, his grow shield, it's just uh, tremendous. Not to mention everything else he brings to the table. Increase attack block debuffs, just a great, great champion to have. Uh, you know, the longer this battle goes on, the more and more scared I get, honestly. Hopefully the A3 is up right now for the cleanse. So we can get uh, Candyman. Okay, we take down the Reviver. Ooh! Okay, now, ooh, peril. Peril number one. Here we go. That was the A2. Big, big heals. I'm not sure if you guys are noticing. But Brogni's dead. Look at that A1. Look at that A1. Let's see if he joins the attack. Ah, Necret joins the attack instead. Okay. Ooh, peril number two. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, come on. Come on, Candyman. Peril number three. <laughs> Dude, but she has so much HP and she's so tanky that it doesn't matter. Three perils in a row, bro. Are you kidding me? But we take the team down, man. We take the team down. But that was, you know, I'm not going to say it was lucky, but you never know. It's RNG when you go against Mortu Macabre, right? So let's go against this squad here. We got a Valkyrie. We got a Yumeko, Prince Kaimar, and Siffy here. I think this will probably be... I was, I'm kind of bumming out, man, that nobody can take me down here. But rest assured, right? Suffice it to say, she gets, everybody gets killed, she gets killed with everybody else, everybody else is revived. It's amazing. That is really, really cool. I read it initially as if she dies, like, separately from everybody else, meaning that if she's, and, and I actually noticed that I have Duchess in the lead here. I think I want to put Necret in the lead, or I could put uh, Mariechka in the lead because she has the uh, she has the better speed aura, so shame on me for that. She does, look at, they have very, very high uh, Kaimar and Yumeko, obviously incredibly high accuracy on the enemy team, and things aren't looking great right now, but we're still going to win. <laughs> Because the longer, this is the beautiful thing about a ghost second team, right? The longer we have into the battle, Valkyrie is another great ghost second champion, right? She can cut in line with her jealousy passive. She has that great counter attack, that great shield. But the longer you go on, if, you're, if your ghost second team is working properly, the longer you go in the battle, the bigger the advantage you have as a ghost second player. Hey, this could be the match. Who knows? But who's really their nuker here? That's, that's the prop, I guess. 
I guess Valkyrie, right? Okay, I, this is a good situation here because maybe Marichka is gonna die. Maybe. Let's see. Oh, she dies. Check it out. Check it out. Boom! Everybody's back revived. I wish Duchess wasn't this low on health, but I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm really impressed by this team, dude, that we're facing. We might lose. Let's see. Yeah! Dude, that Valkyrie is hitting like a truck, man! We're gonna, I think we're gonna lose this one, man. I think we're gonna lose this one. I kinda wanna go in for, for revenge. Uh, but you know what? It might be a sign. It might be, okay, I'm, I'm gonna take it off auto. Maybe that would help, huh? I mean, I think it's too late at this point, right? But Valkyrie, dude, I am impressed with this squad. Honestly, after all the teams that we faced in this video, and I don't cut losses here, obviously, on the channel. You guys want to see, you know, the reality, what you're going to get, no matter what. But out of all the teams that we faced, I wasn't, I got to be honest with you guys, I kind of underestimated this squad. I was like, you know what? I want to, I want a quick double, I want another shot. You know what, guys? Let's try to get revenge against this dude, and let's try to do it with a different Go Second team. Now we have Siffy, Ursiga, Necret, and Rodos. Are we going to be able to resist anything, especially with Siffy? That's the big question. Uh, stay tuned and find out. Now, Ursiga is an amazing Go Second champion, too. We get a resist, resist, resist. So, Siffy did resist everything, which is fantastic. Now we can buff up, and I think this team might be a lot better primed uh, against this squad. So, let's just go in against the, uh, the weak A1 of Prince Kaimar, uh, and then <clears throat> eventually get to Rodos here. He'll still have one turn uh, cooldown on his A3, I believe. Uh, one Okay, so one turn on his A2, but that's totally fine. We can come in with the A2 next, and hopefully after all these buffs fall off before the stand firm comes up from, uh, from good old Valkyrie, hopefully we'll be able to poke through and kill Siffy, right? Take her down. Uh, after this one, we'll go to, after this battle, we'll go to the free-to-play account. But guys, what do you think of that champion, man? I mean, you saw her there in action. It wasn't perfect, unfortunately, uh, but really cool nonetheless, at least in my mind, uh, that revival ability, right? It's come in handy for me so many times. Such a cool champion. She's one of my new faves uh, inside the entire game for a Go Second squad. All right, so here we go, here we go, here we go. Necret's gonna, I mean, excuse me, uh, Rotos will be nice and healthy here. Uh, let's go ahead and put Siffy to sleep. And then let's try to at least destroy some max HP, power up our Rotos, right? I feel like the stand firm is going to be, I think, the next ability up. I hope not, but I think it's going to be. Let's go in, try to sneak in some debuffs. And I think Yumeko is one turn okay. Actually, if Yumeko doesn't have her A3 up right now, we're looking really, really good. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You know what? I am feeling great about killing Siffy right now. Boom! There we go. So this team able to get the job done. I probably should have put left uh, Marika in uh, for Ursuga. I think just having Siffy on the team with her resisting everything was what helped a ton, right? Let's go ahead and pick out Valkyrie because she's so annoying. Get an extra turn and try to take out Yumeko and finally take this team down. All right, guys, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go into my free-to-play account, show you my go second team uh, with really crappy gear, not maxed out champions, and it will be a little bit different in the first half of the video. All right, guys, here we go. Go second on the free-to-play account. We have quite a different looking team. Let me go ahead and show you it. Uh, we have Ultimate Death Knight, who's one of the bosses of go second too awesome to die passive whenever an ally is attacked has 100 chance of completely blocking one hit decreasing incoming damage to zero this champion will receive that damage instead also redirect any debuffs from the hit this to this champion chance of blocking a hit and redirecting the buffs decreases to 50 percent if the attacker is a boss does not work if the attack is an aoe uh really 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 strong ability not to mention he has an aoe decrease attack he's unbooked here shield continuous heal he's bringing a lot to the table on top of a provoke that goes up against legendary champions so we're gonna start off against this easier team here uh, i have skull crown who i mentioned earlier she's not fully ascended she doesn't have good gear on her right now at all but i still love her right and i don't have her in the speed or lead i'd rather have the, a little bit of extra defense because this team honestly is 
pretty squishy compared to the other champions that I showed you guys on the first one. So she has Resilient. That's the unkillable that we talked about on her passive. She's not fully booked, as you guys can see here, but it does not really matter. Skull Crown is amazing. I have Tormund, who's level 50, unbooked, but still, I find him to be incredibly effective. Now, if you don't have Tormund, again, any control champion will do. A Yumeko, a Warlord, even better. But you can even get by with a Freeze champion. You can get by with any sort of a control champion, a Kaimar, a Kanelia, champions like that, right? I love Tormund because that passive just does the work and you can build him super slow. I have him built in a shield set, which I mentioned earlier is really important for a go second squad. So 35k HP was all I could muster on a level 50 champion, but it's a nice, you know, bonus 10k on the shield or so, right? A little bit more than that. And then we have a little bit of defense and a little bit of accuracy, the most I could muster without an accuracy banner on this champion, okay? And then we have Duck the Pierce, who is a great defensive based debuffer, okay? So it's kind of a hybrid team, uh, but I really love it. So let's go ahead and watch them in action. So we have the soaking up damage from, uh, what's his face, from Ultimate Death Knight. And then we have the shield from Tormund. Tormund's gonna be placing the uh, freezes on the enemy team if they ever get a chance to go, which it looks like they're not going to here. Maybe we should go against a little bit more of a difficult team, huh? Start it easy, start it easy, you know? Cause we're not rocking with the same exact account that we were the first time. I find teams like this super fun, even if they're not like really end game pay to win, because I think it's just, there's more strategic versatility than just making the fastest arbiter that you possibly can and keeping your fingers crossed that you're going to be faster than the other team, right? Uh, so this seems kind of scary, man. They have a Kreezia, my number one most wanted champion. Rub it in, why don't you? Uh, but you'll see, I think we'll still be fine here. A Kreezia is great for a PvE nuker. She's not that great for a uh, PvP uh, nuker. Uh, so again, nice and protected vis-a-vis -vis the shield of Tormund. Again, they're getting frozen from Tormund's passive. That's the crowd control coming into effect. You can go with the, even a Provoke champion, a champion like uh, a Rockbreaker, a champion like they're a dime a dozen, right? Uh, Skaramis is a new High Elf uh, Provoke champion who I really, really love. Uh, there's, you know, Molly Tankard is one of the best out there in the game. But this is a nice strategy. It's not taking that much longer than a speed team was. And I don't have to worry about winning the speed race as I normally would. You know, going in there and placing the Fear 2 on his A2 is a great opening move for uh, for Ultimate Death Knight. It's what a really great champion to add to the game, especially on accounts like this that, you know, I'm gonna not spending money. I could really use a champion like that, even unbooked. And to keep in mind, again, Ultimate Death Knight and uh, Tormund are totally unbooked on this team. I might've used like one or two books on Ultimate Death Knight. I may not have, I don't know, I, I forgot. <laughs> But either way, he's not very booked, but he's still incredibly effective because that passive does not take any books, right? So it's really cool to get by with a team like this uh, when you're, you know, you're not spending, but you can basically just go down the list, not even really look at the teams too much and know that more often than not, no, no matter who goes first, no matter what the speed race is looking like, I'm going to be able to win. Now, 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 listen, I'm only in silver, right? I haven't actually played this account in a few days, to be honest with you guys, even in gold. Sure, I'm not going to go against an OP team like I went against in the, you know, in, in the previous account, but it's still going to be an incredibly effective strategy against most teams because, listen, if I was farming in gold four, I would probably be a little bit more advanced in my account, right? I'd probably be rocking better artifacts, level 60 champions, maybe booked up legendaries. And again, I'll show you the builds on these champions before we go, but they're, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's crap. I've, I've really, if there's one massive weakness to my free to play account, it's my artifact farming. It's really, really bad, honestly. Uh, but it's nice to have the provoke there on duck and on, uh, on Tormund. So a lot of control on this team and you can use control to your advantage, right? I have, uh, skull crown and a savage set but i've actually seen skull crown being used in an avenging set as well 45 percent chance of counterattacking when hit with a critical hit that's a fun thing to do especially when she has that unkillable she can wipe the entire squad right she can be the last woman standing but she's counterattacking all the time with those aoe attacks right it's really fun so there's a few different ways to build skull crown let's go ahead and show one more uh team here before i show you the builds let's go against a little bit more of a formidable uh squad here uh, I'm, not, I'm not, we might lose to this team, but let's just go against them anyway. They have two revivers on here. Obviously a good debuffer and tyrant is a beast too, but you know, I want to show you guys more than just collect teams, right? Uh, so let's see. We're not going to be freezing anybody with Tormund. Probably not the best option there because of the block debuffs vis-a-vis -vis Duchess, but, uh, eventually that will fall off and maybe can land some provokes or something as well. Uh, but so far, not so good, I would say. The other team looking pretty healthy really unable to get some serious damage with Skull Crown. But again, this is a team normally 
I would just pass and, and, and refresh. But again, I'm just trying to see if I could win. Sometimes it's good to get a barometer of your squads. And this one's not feeling good at all, right? Keep in mind, they have two revivers. We don't. And look at the health on our champions. Look at all the buffs on their champions. I'm not going to say never, but it's not feeling too good. You will see that Ultimate Death Knight is soaking up all that damage, but he's about dead. And again, once he dies, it's pretty much game over for us. He dies. I think this one's going to be game over. But, you know, let's just wait one more Skull Crown. She's not doing enough damage, unfortunately, to this team, uh, especially with Wretched Wrath in there. Let's go ahead and end it. Okay, let's, let's do one. Let's do the team right below it, which still looked like a pretty tough team, just not that tough of a team, right? Uh, so here we go. That's kind of what I was mentioning earlier. If all these champions were maxed out, if I had higher accuracy, I have like 180 accuracy on Torment. He's not going to freeze any of those champions, you know? Oh, here we go. We get some bombs on us all, right? Lord Shazar. One turn bomb on Lord Shazar. But we have the unkillable on... She's going to be, you know, alive still. Skull Crown, that is. So is Torment because he comes back to life, which is nice. Again, we're looking for those sort of features on a Go Second Champion. Unkillable, she's back there, even with the bombs. So really nice for an anti-bomb team. She does eventually die, which is a bummer. Tormund dies as well, but he's back to life, as we mentioned. I think we could probably finish this team off. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So close. So close of taking out Sepulchre Sentinel, man. All right. Can we duo this team? One down. But they do have the Reviver up. I'm going to take it off auto and go right into Sill the Drakes, man. All right. Ultimate Death Knight, show us what you got, man. I need to take out their Reviver, but I'm kind of scared that we might die unless we put the shield and the continuous heal on ourselves. Eh, what would you guys do here? I'm going to put it on. I don't think we get any chance of withstanding Lord Shazar because his A1 hits so freaking hard if I don't have any buffs up. Uh, and he is Spirit Affinity. Now we can go in on Sil the Drakes. Bummer! So close to killing her, but she is, or she's one turn away from a Revive. We might be able to pull this off here, guys. Let's go in with the A2. Maybe we can get a Fear down. And we do. Hopefully, she loses her turn here. Still the Drakes. She's definitely a lot fa Oh, I thought she'd be faster. She's not. So, hey, guys, we're right back in this here. Right back in this. I'm scared, though. Okay? Ooh. Oh, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. Dark Alhane down. Heal back up, please. And Lord Shazar, get ready to say goodbye. Night-night, my friend. I thought this one was going to be lost, but Ultimate Death Knight proven that he is a boss player in this game. I don't want to speak too soon, but you yeah, man, we got the provoke and everything. I am a little worried about the uh, the affinity matchup here, but I think we're going to be just fine. I mean, everything looks great, right? Extra turn, self buffs, big attack. Didn't hurt that much. I'm going to play it safe. Go in with the A3 again. Continuous heal. Increase defense. Go in here. And uh, yeah, or the shield, I should say. Not increase defense. There it goes, guys. Ooh, that was close there. That was fun, though. Uh, I asked you guys a, a video or two ago if you prefer longer uh, videos when I talk about arena teams. And you guys said you do. So ask and you shall receive, my friends. Ultimate Death Knight, again, nothing crazy here in terms of stats, 45k, 2500. I have him with 216 speed, which is really nice. 299 resist, which helps him solo content as well. I have him in a toxic set, as you guys can see, so he can solo content. Again, he can solo Ice Golem 20, 20, even higher than that uh, with this build. So I actually run him in a PvE build in the arena. Duck the Pierce, I just have in a speed and accuracy set. Most important thing with him is he's landing his debuffs and he's going before my new right so again the accuracy is not that high but it gets it's, it's fine for where i am skull crown again not fully ascended here i told you the stats aren't that great only 3000 on the attack but 99 and only 81 i don't have any crit damage i don't think is this crit damage oh i do my bad uh but still not the best gear on her, right? I've had to go crit rate on the on the gauntlets because my gear on this count really stinks. And as I mentioned, Torment the Cold in a shield set with uh you know a five star uh, or five star champion, level 50 champion, four stars ascended with some HP, little bit of speed, and a little bit of accuracy, the most that I can muster up here. And I'm I'm lacking the silver to totally upgrade his artifacts as well. Ah, the life of a free-to-play player, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.